Hi, Gorsen Fries from onlinepartners.dk. In this video, we are going to show you if you can use Google's hreflang option for international SEO. And we are also going to show you if you can combine hreflang with link canonical in case you also have problems or issues with duplicate content. Now, what's the value of using Google's hreflang option and perhaps combining it with the link canonical tag? Well, the value is that if this works, it means that you can have several websites targeted for different countries, but they are in the same language. And in this test, as you can see, we have the same English on a general English site, a site targeted for Australia, a site targeted for UK, and a site targeted for Ireland. And if this works, well, if you are a person in Australia and you're searching google.com.au, well, you should get results from uh, this subdomain. Or if you are located in Ireland and you're searching in google.ie, well, then you should hopefully get uh, results from the IE subdomain. Initially, I should like to run through how these test sites have been set up. Um, they are located on the href-lang.com domain. And I encourage you all to go in and have a look at how it's set up, with the type of content, etc., and to see how it's all configured. In addition, we have three subdomains. We have the AU for Australia, UK for the United Kingdom, IE for Ireland. And what we have done is that we have made four 100% identical websites. The content on the AU and the UK and the IE are identical to what's on the main domain. So actually in this situation, we suffer greatly from duplicate content. And hopefully this test will show that this is not a problem when you combine Google's hreflang option with Link Canonical. Each of these test sites is built up this way. They build up in five levels, as you can see here, one, two, three, four, five. On each level, except for the front page and on the bottom pages, which are link out pages, you have uh, seven pages on each of these levels. And uh, each test site consists of a total of 901 pages. Now, the content on these pages, uh, on each page, is unique because it consists of gibberish English, but when you look at it, as I mentioned before, cross domain or subdomain, then you have the uh, problems with a massive duplicate content. The reason why we chose the .com domain for this test and combining it with uh, the use of subdomains um, is that if we had chosen to use country code top level domains like a .co.uk for the UK or a .ie for Ireland, is that when you use country code top level domains like that, you immediately uh, give Google a signal that these um, domains are actually targeted for these specific countries. However, using a main domain uh, and subdomains, you do not uh, initially give Google that indication. In order to follow the indexing of these uh, test sites, we submitted each uh, site to the same Google Webmaster Tool account. And we did not do that because we wanted to cheat and then in Google Webmaster Tools set up a target country for the main domain or and for each of these subdomains. We did not do that. We uh, didn't touch that option, so the uh, target, the country target in Google Webmaster Tool is neutral. Uh, and it's neutral, of course, for all four sites. And finally, in order to make sure that link building from um, country-specific IPs did not interfere with the test. Of course, we kept the test secret. Uh, that's one thing. Another thing is that the links we built to these four test sites were from IPs located in Denmark. Previously, I showed you how each test site was set up. Now I'd like to run uh, just briefly through how each page on a test site is uh, set up. Now the content on a page consists of in a head section, a title, meta description, and uh, the configuration of the hreflang option and uh, canonical. 
Now in the part of uh, the pages that is visible in the browser, you have a breadcrumb, uh, you have a headline, a main headline wrapped in H1 tag, and you have one or two paragraphs uh, containing gibberish English, and each of these paragraphs um, also have a subheadline that's wrapped in the H2 tag. Up here, you find more detail about how hreflang and canonical are configured on each page. Um, let's start with the hreflang option. If you look at the main domain, we just indicated language, which is English, because this way we could test uh, sort of general English for all English-speaking countries. That could be the US or Canada, because none of these countries have been targeted on a well, uh, any of these three subdomains. Whereas these three subdomains that are targeted for Australia, UK and IE, we both set up the uh, language indicator and then a dash and then you uh, indicate the country. And it's AU for Australia, it's GB for Great Britain, aka uh, United Kingdom, and it's IE for Ireland. It's important to know when to use hreflang in combination with the link canonical and when not to. Let's assume that these four sites actually contain English, but it's rewritten so each site has unique content. If that's the case, well, we do not have problems with duplicate content, and then you should not use link canonical at all. But in this situation we are testing, we have four sites that are 100% identical, and in that situation you must combine link canonical with the hreflang option. On each of the subdomains, uh, we have set up link canonical, so they point to the main domain because we chose that it was the main domain that should be indexed, that should be the original, and the three subdomains should be indicated to be copies of the main domain. And in addition, we chose to also set a um, link canonical on the main domain, but it just pointed to itself, so it points to itself as being the original. Now, after the launch of the four test sites, we followed the indexing in Google by logging on to Google Webmaster Tools and uh, followed the progress there. In addition, we did some site colon uh, searches in Google. The indexing of the three subdomains was of no surprise. They got up to 100 pages indexed before Googlebot found out that the link canonical tag is used on these subdomains, so the subdomains, after approximately a week, began to be de-indexed again. However, the indexing of the main domain was a surprise, so uh, let's have a look inside Google Webmaster Tools. Now, up here you can see that it's the uh, indexing results from the UK subdomain. Uh, here we have approximately 807 pages that have been um, uh, sort of handled by Google so far. I expect that number to get up to 901, which is the exact number of pages on this test um, subdomain. And you can also see that just 16 pages are indexed uh, uh, at the moment, and, and I expect that to go to zero. And you can also see, if you look at the graph, the red graph showing the total number of pages uh, gone through by Googlebot so far. And you can also see that in the beginning, uh, you had up to approximately 83 pages indexed, and then later on it fell down. And no doubt that's because Google found out that the link canonical tag has been used. Now let's look at the main domain. And here uh, we can see that Google has gone through approximately 4,400 pages. And to me that indicates that due to the use of hreflang and due to the use of link canonical, uh, Google sort of sees the main domain and the three subdomains as one big website. And um, you can also see that at the moment 895 pages are indexed and that's very close to the 901 actual pages on this test site. Also take a look at the graph. You can see that uh, Google um, uh, keeps on looking at more and more pages, but also take a look at that Google actually exceeds indexing the number of total pages um, uh, that are on the site. Uh, the maximum was approximately 1,129. This also indicates to me that this um, number includes both the total 901 pages 
on the main domain and it also includes some of the pages on the subdomain. And later on, due to the use of hreflang and due to the use of link canonical, the number of index pages is now narrowing in on the correct 901 pages. Now, what are the results? Does this work? And the answer is, yes, it does. However, there are some differences between how the search results uh, were um, presented in the beginning of the indexing of the test sites and up till now, where all four test sites are more or less completely and correctly indexed. In the beginning, when you did searches in, uh, sorry, from IP addresses, for instance, based in uh, the UK or in Australia, you always got uh, search results that displayed the main domain. However, now, if you go into um, uh, Google using an IP address based in, for instance, the UK, you get search results that displays the UK subdomain. And if you are based on a um, Ireland uh, IP, then you get the IE subdomain. And if you go um, and search in Google from a, an IP address based in the United States, now we must remember that none of the three subdomains are targeted to the United States. So one should expect that Google says, well, then I choose the general English main site, which is the main domain. And that's also the case. It is the main domain that are displayed in these search results. Before we end this video, I have one final comment. This test does not only show that you can use hreflang for international SEO. It also shows that if you have, like in this situation, several websites uh, targeted for different countries, but they have the same uh, language specific content on them, you can combine hreflang with link canonical and this way you handle all issues you might have with duplicate content. And the best thing to me is that in the past it would be impossible to get the three subdomains with 100% identical content. It would be impossible to get or to let them be indexed. Only the main domain could be indexed. And it was very hard to get the pages from the main domain to be displayed in Google's country-specific uh, search results, like when you did searches in google.ie or google.co.uk. However, thanks to the combination of link canonical and hreflang, this is finally possible. I hope you find these test results both interesting and useful. And if you have any comments or questions, then please leave a comment. You can find us on our blog, on Facebook, on Twitter and on Google+, and you'll find a link to all of them in the description below. Bye for now.